three more coming up. Uh, the one in February is about Wimba. Um, I don't know if some of you have heard about Wimba. It's a, it's a tool within K-State Online, and it allows for live interactions. So if you're interested in that, so please come join us in February. It's on the 21st. And then the one in March is about podcasting and RSS feeds, and this is something we're going to talk from about K-State Online. We have recently launched a new feature which allows you to do RSS feeds from K-State Online, and we're going to talk in detail about that. So if you're interested, please come along. Um, the last one is going to be about creating and using digital learning objectives, and Shaolin is going to be presenting on that, and that's in April. And without further ado, I'll just let Ben start with his Adobe PDF. Hello, everybody. I'm an instructional designer with the Office of Mediated Education, as is Shaw Steve Shaw Land. And uh, if you've come here, let me get this all situated. If you come here hoping for a basic how to that's broken up with questions and ideas and brainstorming throughout, if we're lucky, then you're in the right place. Um, because this is what we're going to do. I'm going to drive basically through a lot of the steps in using. Adobe PDF and, and discuss some of the applications you might want to use it for on the web in, in, in curriculum design or instructional design. Um, I'll also point you to some resource materials that are, are, are very useful if you want to go into further depth. Uh, we're going to really cover a lot of things in a very cursory manner. So if you have questions at any point or something doesn't quite make sense or you're wondering why I'm doing something, don't hesitate to, to shout out and let me know, and we'll, we'll pause, because there's a tremendous number of things that you can do with Adobe Acrobat, and we're actually just going to hit the high points. We really are. Uh, it's become a very, very versatile digital format that, that is used in everything to being displayed up on the web, all the way to, to pre-press operations and color separations. We won't go that far. <laughs> I promise you that. So without further ado, this is the end and beginning of my PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> We're going to hop straight into uh, creating Adobe PDFs. Does anybody have any initial questions right off the bat? There's a big misnomer I find that happens all the time about Acrobat that's important. I should clarify even before we start building them. There is Acrobat Reader, and then there's the full version of Adobe Acrobat. Almost all computers come with Acrobat Reader installed, and if not, you can actually go out on the web and download it for free. This is basically a plugin that lets you read and view Adobe Acrobat files. Um, however, it doesn't let you create Adobe Acrobat files, and that's an important thing to realize. Uh, this happens to me on a semester basis. Someone says, well, I do have Adobe, and frequently they just have the reader and they don't have the full version of the application. Once you have the full version of the application, which is relatively inexpensive, under $100, uh, some departments will provide them. Uh, if you're teaching for DCE, depending on your coordinator, they'll help you get a copy of it. Um, you can get it fairly easily, and it allows you to make um, PDF documents. Now, I shouldn't even backtrack a little step further. Yes, we have a question. Uh, I was just wondering, I also know about Adobe Illustrator. Does that make PDF files as well, or is it completely different? Good question. Uh, Illustrator's designed for actually drawing with computer and creating illustrations. But it's part of the Adobe suite, and it will actually let you output PDF files. And you don't actually need Acrobat to output a PDF file with Illustrator. However, a lot of the really neat features that we're going to go over only exist in Acrobat and not in Illustrator. Uh, the purpose they put it in Illustrator so that they could trade files back and forth between other programs within the Adobe suite. So you could take things out of Illustrator and put them in Photoshop and then move everything into Acrobat and then ship it off to be printed. So they kind of all interconnect one way or another. You can actually create PDFs using um, Photoshop also, or Adobe InDesign, which is for page layout uh, and pre-press operations. Acrobat is, is uh, kind of the utility program that can be used to speak between them. And it creates a, a, a portable document format. In a lot of ways, it's a lot like printing. 
and that's one of those misnomers. We always think we're saving out the PDF. But really, when the computer creates a PDF, it spools it out like it would if it's going to a printer. But instead of hitting paper, it creates an electric, electronic document. It's very versatile. It's a government standard. It's used in many places. You can find it in libraries anywhere. You can even create it in, with digital signatures and so forth. So it, it has a high degree of utility. It really does. And one of the wonderful things about PDFs or Adobe Acrobat is, is those files are cross-platform. It doesn't care if you're using a Mac or a PC or Linux. As long as you have the reader plug in, you can see it. And the neat thing about that is, is that not only do you see it, you don't have to worry about differences between machines. It'll format it identically between all those different platforms. So when you print a PDF on a PC out into a paper format or you print it off of a Mac, they come out looking the same. Now, there are very few things out there in, in the computer world that do this. And, and that's part of what makes it such an attractive thing to be using in e-learning in any, any fashion is, is because it's so versatile and the plugin is so accessible and it really doesn't care about platforms. Um, also, typically, if you have like a text document, like a Word document, a PDF document will be frequently smaller. It compresses it, makes it more web-worthy overall. And, and, and in, since a lot of what we're pointing, pushing this presentation towards is using this in, in your curriculum, um, you're going to find that to be really, really useful. Uh, and there's some other features, like you can keep it from being edited. Students won't be changing your document. Uh, you can actually protect it, make it password encoded, and, and even other features so that they can't even select the text, uh, although there can be some problems with that if you have a student with accessibility issues and screen reader. If you can't select the text, sometimes the earlier screen readers won't be able to read this, the screen. It'll just come up blank. Um, that, I guess, is a kind of a quick and rough description of why Adobe Acrobat PDFs are important. And, and I kind of want to just jump in because there's like, I don't know, almost 20 things I want to go over. And then I want to try at the very end to tie it all together and give you an idea of something you could do with it fairly quickly. My examples are going to be using uh, what they call Greek text. It's, uh, there's not going to be any real words involved or anything. So if you can just visualize your own content in that place, that, that'll probably help you along in our journey. Um, any more questions? Because that was a good question about Illustrator. Okay. Yep. Am I still on? <laughs> that slipped off. What you're really saying, I'm just trying to make sure I check right here now. What we're learning here now, unless we have the full version of the version, uh, we're in no other line. What was the last part of that? We're never basically. Yes. But you can easily just walk down to the computer I store and get a copy. <laughs> I just want to make sure there are two versions you might mention. There are two versions. Yes, I could I should truthfully mention that. Um, there are two versions of Acrobat. This happened actually back in six, I think, is when the split began. We're currently with version eight. I actually don't have version eight on my machine. I have version seven. Uh, the link I have at the end of that document that gives you references, gives you a curricular guide for both 8 and 7. And if you search the Adobe site, you'll find earlier versions. But back at version 6, they split Adobe into two products, Adobe Acrobat into two products. They have the standard version and the pro version. And, and the big difference is, is the standard version will do 98% of everything we're going to show today. The pro version will let you do some of the high-end functionality, like I was mentioning earlier, like color separation for pre-press jobs and so forth. Uh, there's a lot more utility buried into the pro version. And, and truthfully, most of you probably won't need that. I have it there just because I, I like to play with the extra tools <laughs> more than anything. So that's why I have it on my machine. Yes? The standard version uh, create forms? Yes, yes. All of them will create forms. Um, there's no problem with that whatsoever. I'm having a lot of trouble with my mic. It slid down somehow. <laughs> okay. All right. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and hop straight into 
creating a PDF. Um, once you install Adobe Acrobat, uh, it tends to send out little hooks into other programs, specifically Microsoft Office programs, uh, so they can be easy to use quickly. So you'll actually find new buttons on your toolbar the moment you uh, have it installed. And as you'll see, these three buttons here are what appear right off the bat. And, and, and this is just a little side note. If you're formatting your hard drive and installing all your software in again, try to install Acrobat last. Because if Office isn't there for it to hook into, it won't send out those little hooks to hook in there and put all those buttons. But uh, the Office apps, uh, Word, PowerPoint, and so forth, will pop these buttons actually straight into the, uh, to, the to your toolbar. Um, so here's my example again, as I was pointing out. I have a picture I put in, and then a bunch of, of Greek text that really shouldn't mean anything whatsoever. And this is what we would call my source document. Acrobat in of itself, you don't actually use to, per se, create documents. Most documents come from another application, like Word or uh, Internet Explorer, or PowerPoint. These are the ones you're typically going to use. Uh, if you're getting into more high-end things, it'll be things like Quark Express or InDesign or Illustrator. But typically, you create your document using one application, and then from there, you go ahead and create your PDF. Uh, the easiest way to do it with Word is just simply click the button. And then it'll open up this window. And it says, save Adobe PDF file as. And then I'll go ahead and click save. And then it'll start converting it. And when it does this the first time, it may take a little while, because it's actually open, opening Adobe Acrobat. And if you don't already have Adobe Acrobat open, it, your computer could chug a little. It really can. It can take a couple of minutes, depending on your machine. And then all of a sudden, we're in Adobe Acrobat that quickly. Um, now, not all applications that you're working out of are going to have that friendly little button. Uh, you may be using a version of WordPerfect. You might be trying to pull down a web page from Firefox or something to that effect. Um, so we'll just kind of hop over as an example to our web page um, where you can actually find these later. This is kind of a plug for the roundtables. If you go to ome.ksu.edu slash id slash roundtable, uh, you'll find these sessions uh, on videotape and the handouts that come with it. Um, if you wanted to save out a website as a PDF, you actually have to go and print it like you would a, a print document. So you would go to File, Print, and then you would select it from your printer choices, and you'll see one of them that says Adobe PDF. And you would select it, just like it was a printer. And then you click OK. And then it will ask you where you want to save this. And then it will convert the page for you. So there's a way to make PDFs even of pages uh, off straight off the web. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this because that's not where we want to be. Any questions so far about creating a PDF? As you can see, it's a, it's a fairly simple, straightforward process. It shouldn't hang you up too terribly much. Um, then the next thing we can do is actually reorganize our document once we get it into Acrobat. Uh, what you would do is just simply click on your Pages tab, and you'll see all your pages right there in your document. Now, this is a two-page document, so it's not very long or elaborate. You'll see this little red square over to the side. That's actually showing what's in my viewable pane over here to the right. So don't let that, that freak you out if I kind of scroll down a little, you'll see it moves. Uh, quick question before I forget. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got Adobe uh, Acrobat right now, can you put it on your website and see it? Absolutely. There's not any problem with that whatsoever. You might need the reader and, and the middle link. 
it actually gives you where to download the reader if you don't have it on your machine. So you'll be able to get all this information and go accordingly. Now, once you've clicked on the Pages tab, reorganizing your document after you've created the PDF is just a matter of drag and drop. You can just shift things around. Now this is my first page. My last page suddenly became my first page. Yes? With a document like that? Uh, normally what it will do is actually, it will come out in the size of the original document is what it'll do. And that's a good question and a good example. And so why don't we just go ahead and open up a PowerPoint and create straight out of a PowerPoint so you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. Um, I, have, I have a sample that I have here. And this sample is actually from a whole different project and it's just a template that people would fill in for a mock-up of a project. Come on, wake up. Got too many applications in here. Um, all right. So this is just a PowerPoint right there, and it has that horizontal format versus the vertical format. And there's my button, once again. Um, or I can always do the file print method, either one. Uh, my default printer for this laptop actually is PDF, because I'm moving around so often, I'm frequently not hooked to any printer <laughs> reliably. So you would just print it off. You would ask where you want to save it, and then you would just drop it in there. And, and then print, and then, then that, and then, then right here we have some troubleshooting coming from the uh, original PowerPoint, which is not particularly helpful. <laughs> So there's that document right there. And you may have to shift things around in terms of sizing and so forth to get it to fit right. So you can change your page widths and so forth and get it all to work. Now, PDF doesn't really have that many limitations on the size. It can be tabloid size or poster size. So you can change orientations and so forth. Yes? Do you get, like, if you had notes on the side or something, does that all translate out into the PDF? Does it? I don't. It depends on whether you're printing it out in that format more than anything. Because when you're actually printing out your PDF, you get to choose whether or not you're exposing your notes to the side and everything. So it prints out like it would come out of your printer. Um, so you have to make those selections like you would ordinarily with, uh, with um, PowerPoint. Now. Um, truthfully, I, I kind of like to avoid using PowerPoint with PDF because, you know, backgrounds and so forth come across as images and, and that will vastly increase your file size. So um, you're often better off using Word and putting in the few images you want and using that as your source document as closed PowerPoint where things like backgrounds and so forth can actually make it problematic. You can actually end up with a fairly sizable document instead of the more streamlined standard version of a PDF. And we'll go into that in further, more detail here towards the end because we'll get into the whole things of, versus, of text versus image and what that means in creating a PDF document. And I have to keep track of time because as I said, we got <laughs> to run through. Um, you can add pages. So there's a couple of ways to add pages. I could open up a different document. Um, we'll go ahead and open up one that comes from the actual Acrobat site, the Acrobat's top 10 features for educators. And I can just click and drag and drop pages between Acrobat applications. So I mean, I can just um, get them both up and running and click my Pages tab, so there's both there. You may actually have to, if I remember right, tile this window tile horizontally. Uh, I thought I did horizontally. Window tile, oh, I did horizontally, and wanted to do vertically. 
this step actually isn't in your, your directions here. This is a way to change the view. So I have two documents up side by side right now. And what I can literally do is, is I can take pieces of one document and drag them into the other, just selecting pages from the page view and drag them across. And then I can close my, this one that I've added from. And I'm just going to close it without saving any changes. And then I'm back to my original PDF here. And so I've added in three pages from this other document just by dragging and dropping. Now, if I don't want these pages, by the same token, I can just slick, select it from the page view and hit my delete key, and they're gone. So I can get rid of them just as quickly and just as easily. That you actually can't do. And this brings up an interesting point. PDF is kind of a, a destination point for documents. Editing documents is, is, as you will find out as we go through, cumbersome. It almost invariably is easier to go back to your original source document, make all the changes you want, and then print out the PDF again. It really is. Uh, editing in Word or PowerPoint is, is a pretty easy thing to do. As we start editing, as you'll see in, in Acrobat, you'll see it's kind of clunky at best because it's kind of like editing a page after it's already printed. And we're doing kind of the virtual equivalent of whiting out and typing back over it. So it's, it's really a, a clunky endeavor. And it's almost too painful to do nine times out of 10. Uh, the only times you'll ever typically do it is for, say, for one reason or another, you're, you're creating a PDF document. And you're getting a, a kind of an oddity happening as you're printing it out. You know like a, a particular paragraph is not flowing quite the way you want to, or you missed a couple of words for one reason or another. If it's a little thing, then often it's easy to just jump in and add it back in. Um, because you may be having some error in the translation between your two, two applications, between, say, Word and, and PDF. That's a very infrequent occurrence. It used to happen a lot more back in the days of Adobe 5 and so forth. Uh, you see it less and less. Yeah. 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 OK. Um, there's one other thing we call extracting pages. Um, and I'll just go ahead and use this. It's some of these directions I give you, I give you a couple of ways to approach it. Because you'll find out in Adobe there's about three ways to skin the cat every time you do everything. Uh, whether you're using the, the toolbar or you're using the menu options or you're actually just working on the interface proper. Um, and sometimes I'll give you both, depending on which way works best. Sometimes you're going to actually have a larger document, say like a syllabus that you created up, and you just want to pull out, say, your calendar or your schedule or even a list of assignments off into a separate document that you want to either send to somebody or publish somewhere else. That kind of scenario happens often. And instead of just going back and shortening your original document and printing it out as PDF, which is kind of a painful experience because it takes a bit, you can actually just instead select the pages that you want to extract um, and go up through Document. Well, I clicked too fast. Document. And then down here, we have Extract Pages. And you can select what pages you want to create out as a separate document. Now, you can actually, you have choices. You can delete those pages after you extract them. So if you wanted to have two wholly separate documents and separate sources of information, you can do that. Or you can just simply extract the pages as separate files. And we're going to do both. We're going to delete this page, and we're then going to extract it out as a separate file. And then this says, are you sure you want to delete? And then it wants to know where I plan to save this file. And then I will just click OK. And there we go. Here's my original document now. And the third page is now gone. Um, if I go back to my folder, we will see my other page that I extracted out. So this is one way to take large documents, create a bunch of little documents, or, or republish things fairly quickly. OK. 
And one of my favorite things about Acrobat and what you will find it often used in the business world for is, is for reviewing documents. This is particularly useful if you're teaching something like composition or you have large research papers and so forth. Uh, it's particularly useful because you can comment on a document and then force them to go back to the original Word document and enter in the changes as opposed that if you sent them the Word document and then they can just click, you know, selection and apply changes to your markup. If any of you have done any markup with Word, you'll discover that applying your markup to or change suggested changes to a Word document is very easy to do. If you do it in an Adobe document, then they have to go back to the original document and actually make the effort to make the changes themselves so they become more involved with the process. Um, but the commenting tools are really kind of neat. Um, they have their own toolbars. They also come up here with the menuing options. Um, I tend to go here where it says and show commenting toolbar. There's, there's several ways to go about this whole thing. I'll just show you a few right off the bat because there's a whole bunch of things you can do. Uh, one of the first things you, you'll want to probably do is highlight a section of text. You can just click the, the highlight, highlighter tool and then select a portion of your document. You can change the colors of your highlighter if you want to. You can underline. It actually has its own toolbar, so you can do all sorts of fun things. Uh, once you've done that, you can highlight a whole part of it. That often in and of itself is not enough. If you wanted to have more information of why you highlighted it, you would just right click your highlighted section and come over to the third option, which is open pop-up note, and then it will create a little window over to the side where you would type in your comment. And as you'll see, it, it date and time stamps it. I don't know how clearly that shows up on the, on the monitor. Um, yes. It's automatically imprinted into that document. So when you save out the document and send it to somebody, it's there for them to look at. You know, and it just occurred to me, and I apologize. <laughs> I've been fighting through a soft focus through this whole thing. Um, and that's not particularly fun, so I apologize for that. Yes. Are printed out and it's key to little numbers in the PDF text that show up. Which I, I don't like looking at stuff on the screen all the time. So mm -hmm. if you send me something commented, it's easy for me to print it out. And yes, it will print out tons and tons of pages because it prints out the comments pages as separate, but it can be very, yeah. it can make it a little easier to, to read. And also when you mouse over the comments, those little boxes will <coughs> pop up yeah. on the screen. All, all those things, as, as she mentioned, are, are available, and they're actually kind of beyond the scope of what we, we have time to do. But you can export your comments out separately of the document. You can sort them by reviewer in case several people are reviewing the documents. There's, there's a lot of neat little features that you can actually hook into. It's a particularly powerful thing. Uh, but you're right. You can print them out separately. And, and truthfully, I, I still print out a lot of things because reading on the computer screen will wear on you over time. It really will. Um, just a couple of other quick things that you can do. Uh, you can apply notes directly to a point. And, and then type in comments again. Helps if I type right. Um, you can actually right click on this and, and you can even, you know, mark with check, get status, review, migration, reset, pop up locations, my favorite. Then you can actually just move it over to the side so it isn't blocking your text. And that way they can see where it hooks to. Yes? The comment. Both of these things are actually notes that we've added to the side. 
Uh, one way, I've, the first way I showed you is how to highlight text and then trigger a note action. You don't necessarily have to trigger a note. You can just highlight text. Uh, this one actually pinpoints a point, and it can actually you know, be right on top of what you want them to look at. It could be a picture. You could say, this picture is inappropriate, and just pop it right in the middle of it and leave it right there. Um, what I did was just pick my selection point, right-clicked on my, my note, and then repositioned it to the side, and now it indicates where it is. Anytime I roll over it, it'll show you which point it, it, it indicates. This is, once again, just a note tool. Uh, if, if we can even go a step further. Uh, if I go to Comments and show Drawing Markup Tools, you can create arrows. And then I can double click those and actually put in a note once again. So you can get very specific and detailed of what you want to highlight and so forth. Um, you have stamp tool options. Um, so you can do a lot of things like witness, rejected, initial here, accepted, um, reviewed, revised, confidential. You can even do things like uh, text editing, where you can use your selection tool, which is right up here on the bar, and select a portion of it. And then you can actually, you know, replace selected text, um, you know, insert text at cursor. There's a lot of things you can actually do. And we only cover a few of them. If you want to go even further, as I said, the, at the very end of this document, I, I refer to a, a curriculum guide for both the Acrobat 7 and Acrobat 8 for educators. And it's the, the 7 version is a 129-page document, which I actually have printed off if you all want to look at it, um, of all sorts of things that you can do. And even then, it's still just a cursory view of all the features and things that are uh, available to you with Acrobat. Yes, yes, and uh, they can even at times, if they want to, is, is they can, you know, hide the notes and open them up again. So there's no reason for it to be impeding your entire view at any given point in time. So you can close your notes and so forth. All that that is available to to the user. Um, now we're going to do an actual little bit of text editing, and as I said, it's kind of not fun <laughs> in, in, in any sense of the word. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I've done a lot of text editing with Acrobat. It's, it's not fun. It's easier to go back to the source document. It really, really is. Uh, you'd start from your menu option, typically. Go to Advance. I believe it is. Don't I have it down here as Advance? You know. No, Tools. My bad tools, advanced editing, and then all the way down at the very bottom is show advanced editing toolbar. And this will give you the bulk of your features and a lot of what we're going to do for a little while here. Um, right over here at the very end is your touch-up tool. This is where you will click this button to select sections of text. And uh, so right now I'm selecting, when you click it, it'll It'll first of all highlight the block of text, and then you'll actually have to click it again to get, say, the specific sentence. Once you've done that, now it's ready to grab onto it. And as you'll see, even on the screen, it looks kind of dirty. This, this is really one of those things that Acrobat is not the best at. It really isn't. Um, once you've done that, then you really just, you just click and drag to select, you right click, and you go to your properties. And then you can actually change things, you know. What if we wanted to do a different text type? Uh, let's get something a little more meaningful, something that will be obvious, like Arial. Uh, or even better yet, Arial Bold. And you can change your color. These kinds of things are available to you. Um, if it is tagged which will come up again towards the end when we start talking about accessibility. You can change the tag um, and, and all those kinds of things. When you're done, then, 
as you see, we've made a changes. Now that's aerial and bold right there. And using that same tool, we can go in and we can actually add text. It's a little, little trickier. Let's say I go to the end of this paragraph using my text touch-up tool. And then you can do a kind of a control click. It'll ask you what you want your new text to be under what font. So we can go back to the Times Roman. You can actually change the format of it. When you're ready, you go click. And then it places it in there. And you can type, type in your new text. Except it did not control click. Am I making a mistake? Da, 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 da. Type in and then click OK. Type in new text. Ah, see, I've already gotten placed off to the side. So I'm going to do the edit undo until I get it to go away with any luck, and it's not really wanting to go. This is one of those things, as I said, it's kind of risky. I hate this about the text editor. Um, did I get rid of it finally? No. Nope. Can you use Control Z? That's basically what I'm doing right now, and it's taking it away one character at a time. With all the love and affection that adding new text is. Um, as you can see, it's not my favorite thing. And it's just not wanting to be down there. Okay. And it kept repositioning itself at the beginning of the text box, um, which is my fault. I'm just not paying attention to where my cross beam is was showing up. So you can actually enter in your new text. Once you're done typing in your new text, you can actually make changes to your new text by going to the properties. And then once again, you can change its appearance. Um, make sure to highlight it. And then you can add in new things. It's kind of cumbersome, as I said. So it's always easier to go back to your original source document than entering in things. And truthfully, I do this almost never. So even I get kind of hung up on that. Uh, our next step is to add a link. And the neat thing about Acrobat is, is you can link to all manner of things. Uh, you can link to other files. You can link to web pages. You can link to different places in your own document. Uh, all this comes fairly easily and quickly. Uh, we'll start with an example here. I will click on the link tool. This is once again going tools, advanced editing, and we would have shown our advanced editing toolbar, but it's all on the advanced editing toolbar. This is our link tool. When you click on that, you get these little crosshairs, and you actually select an area uh, in which to create your link. So you kind of want to pay attention to how you're selecting it, because often this will create a, a, a bounding box of one sort or another around what you're creating a link in. Um, right now, it's creating a visible uh, rectangle. You can highlight, you can invert, you can inset. They're all little styles that you can do. Uh, you can create a thick line or a thin line. We'll go ahead and do a thick line because it's easier. We'll, well, we'll leave it as blue here. Uh, your first option is, is to like go to another page view. Once you select that and you click Next, then it says, when you're ready, click Set Link. So basically, it wants you to, say, scroll to the top of the page or whichever page you want to get to and click Set Link. Now, if you want to test this, uh, one of the basic features of Adobe is this little hand tool. 
And once you've selected the hand tool, then your document becomes operable like anyone who's using it normally would see it. So you could test it. You click your hand tool. There's my link. I click it. Now I'm at the top of my document that quickly and that easily. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so you can cross link through your entire document, pages and pages and pages. Um, you can link to other documents in a similar manner. We'll go ahead and hit the link to tool. And we can use the same thing. I can go so that it opens up another file. You have to be careful when you're doing this on the web because you want your files to be in basically the same folder. You don't want them in separate folders because you'll have to publish up both files into your managed files if you're using K-State Online. Uh, otherwise, when you hit this link, it'll go looking for a file it can't find because there won't be any relative relationship between them. So once you've linked to a separate file, you've got to make sure it keeps going with it and that it's, it, it is in the same folder structure. I know this kind of gets complicated. <laughs> it really can. Uh, so be careful with this. Uh, it's much easier just to, to link to a web page where you can just go and click next and then it asks you for the URL and you can literally just cut and paste out of the web pages that you have. And I'm just doing a, we'll just do a right click copy, um, hop back to my file and then right click paste and then OK. And then when I click my hand tool to test this, you'll see it even gives me a little, uh, what they call a tool tip or alternate text that lets me know what the actual uh, address is. If I click on it, then it's going to say, do you want to open this in Acrobat or in a web browser? And you click OK. Um, then, of course, you have security warnings for any of your firewalls and stuff where your application is saying, oh, don't do this. Um, You'll have to allow it if you want it to actually do that. And then it's having trouble loading the page. We'll try again. It's not happy. Um, part of the reason it's not happy is, is the wireless internet connection here is very intermittent. And I'm not plugged in directly to the wall. So if, if I refresh this page, we'd lose this page. <laughs> um, so just uh, to kind of give you an idea of all that. Any questions about links? All right. We're going to go ahead and scroll to the bottom of the document and get into even more elaborate things. Um, and I'm going to kind of skip the order of some of these things. We'll start with like linking uh, multimedia. In case you wanted to embed like a, a movie clip or a sound clip, uh, these are the steps you want to take. Be careful doing this because multimedia clips are not going to make your document any smaller. Your document will become proportionally larger to the size of the multimedia clip. It's not going to be compressed by embedding it into a, a PDF. The upside is, if you're not quite sure how to embed, say, like a QuickTime movie into your web page, this is an easy way around it uh, because you can just embed it into your PDF and then they can use it that way. One other downside, though, is, is whatever clip you're going to put in there is not going to stream off the server like it would. Some files are what we call streaming files, and you'll progressively see them as it downloads. Uh, once it's in that Acrobat file, you pretty much have to download the whole Acrobat file before you get to the media clip. Um, whereas if, it, if the media clip's kept separate, you may not have those issues. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a quick clip here. I'm going to select this tool. Once I've selected it, it basically gives me the crosshairs again. And I can create a bounding box. And then it just wants me to select where my file is. Um, I'm just going to browse to a quick file location. And, and I have this one. And truthfully, I snagged this off the web as an example. It's a, a Windows media file. Um, I'm going to leave it at the Acrobat 6. You'll find if you downgrade to the earlier compatibility with earlier version, your choices and types of media clips drastically reduces. Um, you can also retrieve what they call a poster from the movie. This is the, how it will appear in your document. 
Uh, when you do like retrieve poster from movie, it actually takes the first frame of the movie and pops it up there as an, kind of an icon for the document. And then I would just click OK, and it'll take a while to, to bound it in there. Uh, if I want to test it then, I can just do my hand tool. Uh, it's going to give me some warnings, of course, because there are some potential security issues in here. And you can just embed. Now, this is something the projector does. This is what this actually looks like in the original document. Um, when you actually use this laptop with a projector and you play a multimedia clip, the, the multimedia clip takes over the window in the projector, so I apologize for that. Um, so, so, that was just to give us kind of an idea of some of the things you can just embed in there. Yes? Absolutely. So that is a, that's an excellent question. You very much need whatever plug-in for whatever type of multimedia it is you're using. Um, and there are ups and downsizes, downsides to each and every one of the different uh, applicable players. Um, QuickTime files are really nice in one way because they give you nice, crisp, clean files, but they tend to be a little larger than the other players. Uh, Window Media's files are are, tend to make very sleek, small files, but uh, they're not as sharp, and they can be problematic in getting a Windows Media Player on some Macs. So be forewarned about that. Also, there's some some digital rights management issues that can crop up if if somebody's pushing out the wrong type of Windows Media file. That will make trip up on some Windows players. Uh, real player, once again, not everybody has that plug-in and kind of have to go out of your way to get it. But it, in fact, probably offers the best copy protection out of the three players. Um, and that's just kind of a rundown real quick and dirty. Um, so we inserted in our, our, our linking to a multimedia file. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is insert a, a text field. This is probably one of the more useful things to a lot of you is if you wanted to start creating forms and so forth. And I've kind of got ahead of myself here. When you get your advanced editing button, by default, it comes up to your button tool. If you click the little downward arrow, it'll allow you to select from multiple choices of, of types of form tools you can pop in here. We're going to pick the simplest. I do recommend you download that document at, that I refer to at the end of of your handout uh, if you want to get into some more elaborate forms or use the help that's in Acrobat, which is pretty extensive, uh, if you want to use some of the more elaborate form tools. We're just going to do a simple text field tool. Um, once you select the text field tool, you get the little crosshairs here. And basically, you will be drawing a box. There you go. And when you've drawn your box, let's, let's undo that. I'm not happy with that box. We'll try it again. We'll do a little box and we'll just do a little box. Uh, once you've done your box, you want to go in and, and name things starting with the general tab. You know, we can put in things like date. Uh, this little field here that's called tooltip, this is uh, referred to in a lot of other applications as alternative text and so forth. This is really important for a lot of screen readers in terms of accessibility and so forth. It also means when you roll over it, you'll get that little hint of a window. You want to have those things filled in also. Um, you can change your appearances and so forth. I really recommend putting some kind of border around it so they actually see where the field is. Otherwise, it's just a, an invisible field out in the middle of your document and you don't see anything. Um, you can def you can enter in you know scroll long text allow rich text formatting if you want to do things like HTML coding in there you can limit the number of characters uh, you can make it multiple lines all these things since it's just date we're going to make sure we're going to limit the characters um, one of the last things you're going to want to do here is click to your format tab 
And if you leave no format there, it's just basically a cell that you can enter in text into. In this case, you can only enter in 10 characters because we limited it. Uh, but there are some predetermined formats that are in there, like date, time, percentage, number. You can also put in some specialized and custom settings in there. If you select date, then it gives you a whole different variety of ways to visualize the date. And you just select one of them. And that's what it's going to be expecting as it's formatting. So you might warn them in the text of your document, this is what I'm looking for. Otherwise, they can get frustrated. Once they've done that, then this is the way that'll look when I do my hand tool they'll have here. And let's see, there's no point of reference because I haven't typed date before it. So really, when you build your document, you kind of want to put your headers and so forth to anything that you want to later build a form around. You know, date column, um, colon, or, you know, uh, write a description about yourself as a header and then put the text field below it. If you don't put those things in there, they're not going to appear in there. You're going to have to go in and add text, and that's, as I said, we've seen this is kind of a pain. Um, you can reposition these things once by just clicking on, the, on your, your uh, text field tool, and you can actually move things around if you need to. Um, so if we really wanted to do this, I'm not sure it's going to let me to do it with the, the media above. It's probably not. So we'll just go ahead and leave that there. Um, so it's really important to kind of plan out your document with your source document before you actually go into the PDF format. Um, I'm sure I can eventually get a way to type in date, but it's not really worth the pain and suffering that I'll have to undergo to get it there. <laughs>